Uh, we're here discussing our uh, pilot study for a novel edible prep uh, that we're presenting at, at today's meeting. Uh, my co-investigators and I, we um, uh, know from doing colonoscopies for many, many years that the top reason that patients uh, avoid colonoscopies is because of the onerous prep, uh, which involves uh, drinking two to four liters of fluid, typically fasting, uh, and uh, since colon cancer screening is so important, we decided that we would try and challenge the idea that uh, those two things, fasting and uh, taking a large volume of prep, were needed for preparation for colonoscopy. So we set on a pilot study of 10, pa of, uh, 10 patients and uh, involves a new product which uh, takes uh, purgatives that are incorporated into a nutritionally balanced menu that patients took over the course of the day uh, and the day before, uh, the day of and the day before their colonoscopy. And uh, we found that uh, all 10 patients that we uh, enrolled in the pilot study uh, had good to excellent overall preps and uh, their rating of the prep as patients, uh, they all found it e extremely uh, uh, easy to take. They all rated it as having no problems and all of them uh, told us that they would take the prep again. So we're very encouraged by those results. There were uh, three components to the prep. We used uh, PEG 3350 and sorbitol and ascorbic acid that were incorporated into the foods. Um, patients had menu that consisted of, of puddings, uh, pretzel, uh, pasta salads, and, and smoothies. And is, uh, uh, purgatives that are uh, prep the colon that are incorporated into a menu. So patients will take food over the course of the uh, 24 hours uh, before their colonoscopy uh, for their prep. So uh, the days of, we hope, uh, two to four liters of fluid and long fasts uh, may soon be gone. We're encouraged by uh, our results and we're currently investigating this in a larger uh, phase two trial. So. So these are, um, these are chemicals that have been used uh, in preps for years, just uh, hasn't been used, uh, incorporated into food, and that's the novel part of our study. And so uh, and it, it was, the inventors worked very carefully with nutritionists to make this uh, uh, nutritionally balanced. And we looked at safety in the 10 patients in our trial, uh, looking at electrolytes, uh, kidney function before and after the procedure, and there were no cl clinically significant changes. Uh, our study uh, uh, showed that it was uh, just as effective in comparison. We, uh, our scales that were done by the endoscopist showed all of the preps were good to excellent, uh, which would be preps that would be um, more than adequate for colon cancer screening uh, by current guidelines. Uh, again, it's a pilot study, so replicating this in a large group of patients is going to be really important. But uh, so far, we're, we're very impressed with, and, uh, and we started actually with some very moderate expectations, and we're really pleased uh, that uh, all the 10 patients we enrolled uh, at first had very good results. We, uh, as gastroenterologists in general, and also uh, from a public health standpoint, see a real need to improve adherence in colonoscopy. So uh, as it stands right now, we know that uh, about half the people who should be colon cancer screened uh, are not getting screenings. We know that colonoscopy uh, is one of the, the best tests for colon cancer screening. Uh, and we know that roughly 15% of people you know, won't take or finish their preps. Uh, so, uh, and not only that, patients identify the prep as uh, the number one obstacle uh, why, uh, as to why they're not getting their colonoscopies done. So uh, our hope is that uh, if our phase two and uh, subsequent studies show that this is a very effective prep and, and we can replicate what we saw in our pilot study is that it will improve adherence to colonoscopy uh, and colon cancer screening and have a real impact on public health.